So a Detroit mom is charged after her blind, I said blind, three-year-old son, one to three, was found in the freezer, his body. Let that sink in for a second. Oh wait, I can't sink in, cause this ain't normal. So let's dive in and see what's going on here. What is going on in Detroit? Hey special family, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, I'm an autism mom and on this channel we talk about autism and everything in between. If you like to be part of the family, because we do things like this a lot, click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, be part of the family and you'll know whenever I post a new video. So we're gonna go to the computer and see what in the living world is wrong with this Detroit mom to do such a heinous crime. To commit such a heinous crime towards a three-year-old child. Let's see what her problem is. Alright, let's get to the computer. Hey guys, this is the story I was referring to. It's from NewYorkPost.com. The link will be in the description below. The title is Detroit Mom Charged After Blind Three-Year-Old Son's Body Found in Freezer. Let's see what this is about charged after the death of her young child. This happened on the west side of Detroit. We can tell you this is such a horrific story. The young boy was found decomposing inside of a basement freezer. And as the mother sits behind bars today, family, friends, and the community came together to remember Chase. Fox 2's Camille Mary was there. She joins us live with the story. Camille. Yeah, a very emotional scene earlier tonight at the family home. Friends and family gathering to say goodbye and trying to make sense out of the senseless, talking about what a great little guy this was. Take a look. God knows how I'm feeling. It's, I, know, I know Chase is a better place, but it still don't make me stop crying. It's, it hurt. It hurt real bad. He only three. The little boy's remains discovered in a freezer in the basement of his home on Monte Vista on Detroit's west side Friday morning. His death ruled a homicide. His mother, 31-year-old Alzura D. France, charged with first-degree child abuse and concealing the death of an individual. You, you're not supposed to do that to a kid. He, I feel like no kid in this world should be deceased. I want everybody to know we did as much as we could as a family. Sunday night, a gathering to say goodbye to little Chase. This is a very hard pill to swallow. But we 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 gonna pull through through the grace of God who give us the strength to do it. Family members and neighbors say Child Protective Services was contacted more than a dozen times, but every time CPS caseworkers were unable to make any headway, they were not allowed inside the home. Authorities finally able to make entry this week. Just this time, the signs were strong enough for them to go ahead and locate. Um, locate him. Right now, it's unclear how Chase was killed and how long he'd been deceased. Cheryl Hardy lives next door. I would have never known. She told me that um, he had gone to Alabama with a family that could take care of him and that he required a lot of attention. And I believe that. The little boy required a lot of attention because he was blind. But as his cousin tells us, that wasn't always the case. Yeah, he could, he could see perfectly. So like if I would have said, uh, go get some juice, and he wanted some juice, he would point at the apple juice and stuff. He, he was a smart baby. Now GoFundMe has been set up to help raise money to pay for Chase's funeral. If you would like to help contribute, we'll put a link on our website, fox2detroit.com. Reporting live, Camille Mary, Fox 2 News. All right, guys, I'll put a link to this story down below so that if you would like to contribute, you can do that. So let's see what this article is saying. A Detroit mother has been charged with murder and torture after police found the decomposing body of her blind three-year-old son stuffed in a freezer in their home. Azuradi Franz, 31, was hit with a string of charges on Sunday over the death of her little boy, Chase Allen the Detroit News reported. 
Chase's body was discovered in the home's basement freezer last Friday after police and child services were called to conduct a welfare check on the boy. The medical examiner ruled the boy's death a homicide, but details surrounding exactly how he was killed haven't been released. It wasn't immediately clear when Chase died or when his remains were put in the freezer. When police and child services entered the home last week, they also found her five other children living in squalid condition. Five other children? Oh, wow. This is three-year-old Chase Allen, which body was found in the freezer decomposing. The five surviving kids were taken to a hospital for evaluation. Franz was charged with felony murder, first-degree child abuse, torture, and concealing the death of an individual, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy said. The alleged facts in this case have astound even the seriously jaded Worthy said. Our children continue to be at risk, not just from gun violence, but also from the alleged murderer that lives in the house with them. The accused killer's own mother, Tony Haynes, told the outlet she and other family members had previously warned child services about her daughter, but they would go and inspect and then give her kids right back to her. She said France had previously told her the slain boy had burned his hand on a plate full of noodles and later went to live with his paternal grandfather's girlfriend. Hmm. So that's where the story end, and this is what happened to this poor three-year-old child. Now, I want to have your opinion on child services, their role in this, because as I'm reading the story, I see that child services have been has been notified several times, and all they did was give the children back to the mother. Or do you feel that they're just as guilty as the mother who did this to the child? Do you feel they could have prevented this from happening? I would like to know your opinions in the comment below because I feel like they could have prevented it if they had taken swift action when they were called multiple times to the house. I'm pretty sure the kids were in deplorable situation at the times that they went to. It's not like she made sure the whole house was fixed span before they came that day. I think the signs were there. And because, as we know, it's also not easy for child services to do placements. Placements is something that they need more of. So when they feel like, okay, we can leave the kids a little longer here, and this looked like one of those situations that went out of hand, so as I was reading the story, I was reading the prosecutor's quote, our children continue to be at risk, not just from gun violence, but also from the alleged murderer that lives in the house with them. That's a powerful statement. And those are things that happen. So I would like to hear your two cents on this story in the comments below. What do you think child services could have done to prevent this? And what could the family members as well have done to prevent this? Because these things should not be happening, but they do. So I would like to hear your opinion on this story. All right. I hope this story was an eye opener and I'll catch you in the next one.